Max Verstappen has managed to put himself in the negative spotlight yet again, but this time for all the wrong reasons. The Brazilian GP just wasn't his weekend, but it goes without saying that his actions weren't something that Red Bull fans would love to see more of in the future. While many were quick to bash Verstappen for not letting Perez by on two occasions during the sprint race and main race event, it seems like Verstappen's actions were motivated by his own reasons. Nonetheless, many have condemned his actions as hostile and uncalled for, as Verstappen stated in a post-race interview. So, were his actions justified? During the qualifying for the sprint race, Verstappen was on a different tactic than most of the field, and on top of that, he ran over debris from Alonso's car and suffered from a loss of downforce. With that being said, it's evident that his race was going to be a downhill battle from the point he was passed by Russell, but on top of that, he was passed by Sainz and Hamilton, losing three positions and finishing fourth. But while being P4, he had an opportunity to pass Perez for P5. True, it was a far-fetched scenario with the Mexican just too far behind the Dutchman and Leclerc trailing behind pleading for a chance to climb higher than P6. As you already know, the battle for P2 in the Drivers' Championship is still ongoing, and Leclerc and Perez are fighting fiercely for it. When Perez asked about Verstappen's position, the silence from the other side was just too much for the Mexican to process, and his proposal was rejected. But in this case, you can make a strong case for Verstappen because the Mexican was simply too far away to compete with the two-time world champion. It's not like he was in the DRS zone with plus 0.300 seconds distance, and then Verstappen just refused to give in, similar to what Ocon and Alonso experienced throughout the season and in Brazil. Throughout the 2022 season, Perez was just much slower than Verstappen, and he cannot expect that the Dutchman will just park the car whenever he sees fit. True, he gave his position a lot of time to Verstappen, but even if he didn't, it goes without saying that Verstappen is a much more dominant force in the RB18 compared to Perez. Just look at how they perform against the other drivers, such as the Ferrari and Mercedes ones. Nevertheless, it goes without saying that Perez deserved much more than what he's been given by the team, especially after the race outcome. The second safety car was truly heartbreaking for Perez, as Sainz, Leclerc, and Alonso all managed to crawl right up behind the Mexican, who was on a medium compound tire. During this race, we saw that the soft compound tires worked a lot better than the medium compound ones, and therefore, everyone was oriented towards this tactic. Drivers were even using soft tires because they gripped better than the new medium compound tires. Nevertheless, Perez didn't have a fresh or used set of soft tires waiting for him in the pit stop, and that's why he had to work with what he had. This eventually resulted in him being passed by Sainz, who won the podium, Leclerc and Alonso, who lined up P4 and P5 respectively, and Verstappen, who then refused to give Perez the position back. When Verstappen was P7 behind Perez, the team decided that Perez should give the spot to Verstappen due to the fact that the Dutchman was on much fresher, soft compound tires compared to the Mexican. However, the ultimatum to Verstappen that he needs to pass Leclerc and Alonso was given, and if he failed to succeed in his mission, then he was obligated to give the position back to the Mexican. With just four laps to go and around two seconds difference to Leclerc, Verstappen was put on a difficult but not impossible mission. Nevertheless, he failed to pass even Alonso, let alone Leclerc, and when everybody expected him to give the position back to Perez, he refused to do so. Lambiase, Verstappen's engineer, asked him why he did what he did, and to this, Verstappen said, I told you already last summer, guys, don't ask that again to me, okay? Are we clear about that? I gave my reasons, and I stand by it. What we can conclude from this statement is that this has already been discussed in the garage, and the question has to be asked, why did Red Bull ask something of Verstappen that they already knew he wouldn't fulfill? It's like they are shooting themselves in the leg with their own gun. But at the end of the day, it's possible that they were hoping for Verstappen's sportsmanship to kick in and for him to recognize what Perez has done for him over the previous two years. Let's just mention a couple of the occasions on which Perez sacrificed his race and gave 120% of his effort in order to put Verstappen in a winning position. In Turkey 2021, Perez defended against Hamilton in a race that was soaking wet, and at one point, came from off the track just to defend his position and prevent Hamilton from taking more points from Verstappen. 
Abu Dhabi 2021, Perez was able to defend against Hamilton, who was in much more superior machinery, and was able to cut eight seconds off his lead over Verstappen. On top of this, he was able to provide DRS to Verstappen while the Dutchman was able to come very close to Hamilton. And this was the point where Verstappen called Checo a legend. Perez's ability to endure the tires was extremely beneficial to Verstappen and his race on numerous occasions, as the team was able to run different strategies on both drivers. However, it seems like one action that was performed by Perez is what made Verstappen very angry. And it happened this season during the Monaco GP. The qualifying session in Monaco finished under a red flag that was caused by Perez as he crashed prior to the entrance to the tunnel. At this point, both Ferraris were ahead, but Verstappen was in the purple sectors and he was likely to secure the pole position or at least the front row in Sunday's race. What's controversial is the fact that Perez admitted after the race that he'd crashed deliberately just so that he could keep the spot ahead of Verstappen because at this point, he had the championship hopes alive and he was just 15 points behind Verstappen after the Monaco win. This was also the race where Perez was prioritized with the tire strategy, as he was able to jump both Ferraris while Verstappen jumped just one place, from P4 to P3. Joss Verstappen spoke publicly about this incident, saying that the team made a mistake by not prioritizing the championship leader, and Horner defended the team's decision by saying that this is not Max Verstappen or Sergio Perez racing, but Red Bull racing. Interestingly enough, after this race, we never saw the same competitiveness out of Perez, and he lost every touch in the championship fight. Verstappen was also asked by the reporters whether or not the Monaco incident was what led to the fact that he didn't let go of Perez when he was clearly instructed by the team to do so, and he answered, You could guess. I'm not going to answer that. I understand from Checo's side he is disappointed, but I also gave my reasons why I didn't do it, about something that happened in the past. That's why we all sat together and talked about it. As a team, we understand, and we have to move forwards. We go to Abu Dhabi, and if he needs the help there to finish ahead of Charles, I will help him. Perez was very disappointed after the GP, as he added that, had it not been for him, Verstappen wouldn't have won two championships. We could make a compelling case for the 2021 championship, but it goes without saying that Verstappen's dominance in 2022 was just way too much for Perez or for any other driver on the grid to fight with. That is why the Mexican could be out of reach a little bit for this season, but nonetheless, he is a pivotal part in Red Bull's success, and while his pace has dropped suddenly from Monaco onwards, it's not something that we should diminish at any given point. Perez is now entering the last GP in Abu Dhabi with an equal amount of points as Leclerc, and we are yet to see whether Verstappen will leave enough space for Perez if he is asked about the positions and the finishing order. It's also worth noting that Max lost a lot of fans as a result of his moves and actions, and it's never a good sign when a driver believes he's outgrown the team that gave him two championships. What do you think about Max's actions? Do you think that they are justified? Let us know in the comments below.